Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as uh, uh, you know, uh, infrared thermography has been adopted uh, in the past 30 years to assess the photic properties of uh, materials. And uh, in the last 10 years, more than 10 years of research, um, the, um, the evaluation of the energetic release um, under a static tensile test has been adopted also to uh, analyze possible uh, irreversible um, plasticization in the materials. So the aim of our work is to move from the uniaxial stress field to a biaxial stress field. So uh, we perform uh, um, both static tensile and static torsional tests. Uh, uh, for a uh, structural steel under adiabatic uh, uh, condition. And as you know, here is reported the classical uh, Resitano thermographic method to assess the fatic properties of the materials. But as I say at the beginning, uh, in the pioneeristic work of Cagliotti since uh, 1982, the energetic release has been monitored uh, uh, during a static tensile test. And as you can see here, we have a linear decrement of the temperature reaching a minimum point. And after once this minimum point has been reached, the temperature increase. Uh, historically, this point has been considered the, um, the yielding point, the yielding stress level of the materials. But if we analyze this region, we can uh, retrieve some useful information about the um, damage of the materials. So in, um, in 2009, Risitano and Risitano proposed the static thermographic method to assess the, um, the first damage initiation within a materials. So during a static tensile test, we can, um, um, we can see that the temperature of the specimen uh, undergoes to a linear decrement of the, uh, of the signal temperature, then in a linear way, according to the Lord Kelvin law, then the temperature uh, experience in a second phase a deviation from the linear trend up to a third phase where the minimum temperature point has been reached up to, uh, and the final phase here where the specimen broke. As I say, point B is related to the yielding stress level of the material, but if I, uh, if I am able to detect the change in the slope so the change between phase one and phase two, I can correlate this first this stress level to um, um, as the macroscopic stress level that introduced the first damage within the material. So I can think that this um, this first damage can induce uh, uh, fatigue damage if uh, cyclically applied. Actually, we are also working to a machine learning approach to detect the transition point between phase one and phase two. Here, there is a publication on uh, structure and structural integrity. So moving to our work, we adopted our glass specimen of a structural steel, and we test uh, three specimen per test. I mean static tensile test and static torsional test, adopting free stress rate, three megapascal per second up to five megapascal per second. Um, we analyze also the maximum point of a rectangular area positioned over the reduced section of the hourglass specimen. And we adopted a, a biaxial load machine 
and an infrared camera with an acquisition rate of 15 Hertz. So here I report the, um, the temperature signal versus the load. As you can see in the first phase, in the um, fractional test, we experience, we can uh, see um, a linear decrement of the temperature followed by a second phase. And here in this point, we can see that there is a, a, um, a net step between the temperature signal, because here we, um, we experience Luther's band on the materials. The same apply to the torsional stress state. So if I filter the temperature signal, this is for the tensile test. Here I can um, see that there is a first phase, as I, I mentioned early, and a second phase with a different slope. If I uh, perform the linear regression of these two phases, I can assess the um, intersection between, between these two lines, so I can read the limit stress of the material. This is, is performed for a, a stress velocity of uh, uh, 3 megapascal per second. Here I reported also the um, the temperature curve for 4 megapascal per second and 5 megapascal per second. The adoption of the stress rate is important in order to uh, highlight the phenomenon because it must, must be uh, performed under adiabatic test conditions. So the specimen mustn't have the time to exchange it with the surrounding environment in order to um, appreciate the, uh, the phenomenon. Moving to torsional test, we can see for the three megapascal per second test that we can also see two different distant phases, the first one and the second one. And here also we can estimate a, um, a tangential stress, a limit tangential stress. The same applied for an eiger stress rate for megapascal per second. While it is a bit different, a bit difficult to assess the, um, the distinction between the two phases in the highest velocity, five megapascal per second. Here I reported all the test results. As you can see, we have the yielding stress both expresses as uh, uh, normal stress and tangential stress. And here I reported the limit stress assessed both under traction and torsional tests. So in conclusion, we can say that uh, um, the uh, structural steel assess, um, exhibit um, the Typical, um, the typical trend of a uh, thermoelastic load, and it exhibits also the transition point between the phase one and phase two. Also in the uh, biaxial stress plate, we can um, appreciate the phenomenon. And uh, we can, in further study, we have the, um, the idea to perform on the same specimen geometry, static tests both in um, monoaxial and biaxial stress state to correlate the limit stress with the, uh, the fatigue limit of the material. Thank you for your attention. I would also invite you to the special issue on forces in mechanics regarding energy method and for PhD, the summer school in energy method and fracture that will be held in Messina in July. Thank you.